submit questions for the record after today's hearing, please do so by 5 p.m. this Friday, January 15th. Um, I guess I'd, I'd like to start, and I, this is one of the questions we had when we had a chance to visit over Zoom. Um, you've had positions in prior administrations that at least in terms of kind of the outside hierarchical approach appeared to be higher in the food chain. You've had an extraordinarily successful private sector career. Uh, share with the committee um, why you're willing at this moment in time to come back to a part of DHS that I think really needs strong leadership, but uh, uh, it, it, was not, it would not be viewed as a conventional choice. I appreciate that question, Mr. Chairman, and once again, thank you for the opportunity to talk to you the other day. Um, well, look, it was the honor of my life and career to work in government for the 21 years that I did, and, um, and yeah, the, the titles, and the positions and the responsibility at higher levels is great and it's exciting. Um, but it's really the substance of the job and the people you do the job with that make it so important. I've often been asked what's my favorite job I've ever had and my answer honestly is being in AUSA, working with trial teams, prosecuting cases. That's the low end of the totem pole but it was the substance of it, the meaningfulness of it and the camaraderie of it were the best and that's the way I look at this. It's a, f a wonderful team from Sef Secretary Marcus on down, and then the larger constellation of national security leadership in this administration. As you pointed out, we're at a critical time in our history. INA has an important role to play in a lot of really important missions. Um, so I couldn't be more proud and more um, excited about this opportunity. Well, I accept that answer, and I, I appreciate your willingness to serve. I, I promise I won't uh, reveal to either President Bush or Bob Mueller that you said the AUSA job was better than working for the, both those individuals directly. Um, talk to me a little bit, and I think many members may want to get into this, and I, it's one of the reasons why I think you're such the right choice right now. This is a piece of DHS that a lot of us were concerned about in terms of what happened in Portland. A lot of us were concerned that didn't do a very good job in terms of alerting prior to January 6th. There are enormous challenges in terms of how you set up your role vis-a-vis -vis the FBI and what kind of collections. Can you talk about how you can work with the FBI but also de-conflict with the FBI? No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Look, there, there are issues with INA as there are with any organization. I just want to say I've spent a lot of time with the folks at INA over the last few weeks and I've been tremendously impressed, as I said in my remarks, with their quality and their dedication. They're good people and that's the key. I mean, when you have good people on the team, the team can succeed. It's had some headwinds um, for a number of reasons. They haven't had, they've had largely acting leadership, which is a problem, you know, and that's not anybody's fault, that's just happened. And, um, and then a variety of things have happened that have made it, uh, you know, made things difficult. Um, but the makings of a strong team and a strong operation are there and they're doing great things right now. In terms of specifically the work with the FBI, I think that's an important issue. And look, whenever, when you look at the intelligence enterprise in our government, the lines by, very intentionally, are not clearly delineated. There's overlap. There should always be some overlap between the different agencies. But you have to keep a focus on that because you don't want overlap to mean duplication. Or for that, even worse, confusion. Because if two intelligence agencies are working in the same space and come up with different analyses, that just confuses the customers. So the FBI and INA need to work very closely together. I understand they have a strong relationship and I expect that um, if I'm fortunate enough to be confirmed, one of my first visits will be down to FBI headquarters to talk about the state of the relationship, where we can coordinate better, and where we can make the lines clear. Yes, I mean, and I'll give you the benefit of the doubt here. I, I do wonder you kind of, at what point do you throw a case, an investigation over the transom to the FBI to pursue potentially for criminal charges versus how far um, you might pursue a matter. Uh, I also think you're going to have uh, challenges with deconfliction with CISA as well. I think one of the things that Chris Krebs did a great job for President Trump under, and I think Jen Easterly is doing a good job right now, is really building up those capabilities at CISA. But there's going to be some of those, um, uh, you're going to have some rub with CISA as well. Do you, can you want to speak to that for a moment? Look, you just sort of look at the org chart and you look at the responsibilities and you see there's gonna be some overlap. I don't know that that necessarily translates into rub. In fact, my sense is that they've, the two entities have done a good job 
trying to coordinate and making sure that they're, you know, that INA is providing the intelligence advantage, advantages uh, both within DHS and CISA as well as to the state and locals and that CISA is helping to operationalize that. Um, but I've been in touch with Jen Easterly. She and I talked at length just the other day um, and we're gonna be focusing on, on that overlap and frankly, on the need for that coordination to be even stronger because it's gotta be the intelligence and operational side working together. Thank you. Senator Rubio. Thank 